Hi everyone, welcome back to another video with some art tips with me, Ellie. And today I'm on Anglesey's east coast near the little village of Moilborough uh, with its lifeboat station. And um, we've, uh, I, well, I've just come down um, right to the sea here and I want to talk a little bit about, before I get going with any artwork, I want to talk about how you might think about what you're going to do when you come to a location and maybe you have the opportunity to be somewhere beautiful as I do today, to be right by the sea. Um, but maybe it's not the most interesting thing for you to be looking at if you're looking at the whole general scene. Maybe that's not really what's kind of firing you up today. So what can you look at? And as you're walking around, I'd just ask you to look at things that actually, look at whatever grabs your attention and try and be ready for what could interest you. So we've got some things here. I'm just gonna put the camera around here. Uh, as I'm walking, I kind of really love these rocks. I love the shape of them and the lichen patterns on them. And I love these plants over here as well. And this kind of interesting texture that we've got with uh, this dried, dried, um, almost rotten version of the plant. I'm not sure what it is, it's some kind of succulent. So I'm liking that as well. And then even going right down to the smaller level, I'm, I'm loving these, um, orifices in the in the rocks here which actually each one's growing little plants as well so don't just go for the big thing when you're out and about maybe look for the unexpected and look where you don't normally look or take an angle that you don't normally take um, I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do yet but in a minute I'll uh, make a decision and plonk myself down and uh, we'll get started on something Okay, so uh, I've sat down now and I've decided that I'm going to make a study of um, uh, one particular rock that's in front of me actually because I'm really loving all these beautiful golden yellow colours that are on it and it's such a refreshing change now to see some yellows coming ahead of the springtime. Um, if I just, uh, you can see there's lots of rocks I could have chosen or I could have chosen a big pile of them but I'm, uh, I've actually put myself down near this one here and um, I'm actually going to be sort of looking at this quite closely I guess and studying it and um, intensifying the colours a little bit as I've done in the last video. I'm going to work again today on cardboard with some gouache but I'm going to start off with some pencil uh, pencil drawing. Um, I have to kind of sit in a fairly flat position when I'm doing these videos because of holding the camera and um, and so on but it's a good idea I think sometimes for you to think about creating some strong angles by choosing something that is on a diagonal. Um, I can't really get in a position in this video to to do that as a diagonal that's strongly there but wherever there are diagonals within that or strongly slanted shapes within that rock um, I'm going to sort of draw attention to that because that kind of creates a bit of drama in a picture um, even by itself so let's see if we can now I'm sitting actually a bit further away from it so I'm going to come back now and um, angle down a bit on the paper um, so that you can see me get started and then I'll probably um, do some sort of speeded up uh, speeded up painting a little bit today um, so um, I'm going to um, say start off on pencil. This is another the, the back of the, another sketch pad that I finished. <laughs> so I like to use this, and I'm just using a, a 4B pencil actually to draw on this. It shows up quite well on grey cardboard. And I think if you're doing um, something that has already got quite a few greys in it, then it's quite a nice um, kind of tricky position now actually today. Um, it's quite nice to use a sort of sympathetic colour for the ground, as we call it. Um, I'm going to have to find another way to hold this. So I'm going to do um, a sort of fairly simplified outline to begin with. And I'm just looking for the strongest shapes that I can see in that rock. So there's some clear edges, um, which I quite like. I'm going to give myself the basis of the shape to begin with in pencil. I'm nothing to say you can't go straight into paint, but um, I've got some nice responses actually the last time I painted on cardboard. Some people haven't even tried it before, so it's actually you know, quite handy medium. Good recycling as well. So most of the details I'm aiming to capture in paint, but as a sort of build, literal kind of building block to begin with, I'm going to map that out. And I'm thinking also about the time I've got, I'm prepared to sort of sit here, fairly chilly day. Just think a bit about, you know, what I can realistically do and practically do in the time that I'm giving myself to sit here. I'm quite warm at the moment because I've got about four jumpers on. <laughs> I don't know how long it'll last once I've stopped. Stop walking around. <laughs> so, 
So, okay, so we've got a kind of a rough, blocky outline there. There's a big gap underneath where the other rock is just sort of leaning on another rock down there. And that's got some really beautiful, almost like lime green lichen patterns on it down there. The air is so pure and clear here, the lichen grows very readily on rocks and trees. So I'm really just doing those big things today. I'm not even necessarily doing any kind of background. So this is really, it's like painting as a sort of process of studying really. Now, as I start painting, I'm mixing up some gouache. And my approach is to get a strong base color down first. And I'm gonna choose the middle tone of that gray. So I'm mixing up a gray. Um, it's got a little bit of, it's got a warm gray. So I'm gonna add, add a little bit of yellow into it, yellow ochre. Not too much though. Um, and so a good approach is to to block the area in you'll still be able to see some of your pencil lines and I'm not going over them entirely so I've still got a kind of map that I can work with and then what I'm aiming to do is that's going to dry quite readily as we go along because the cardboard is so absorbent and it's actually quite, although it's cold, it's actually quite nice. It feels like a drier day than it has been, um, less humid. So I think it's going to dry quite readily. And then after I've got the base colour down, I'll start to look at the, the darker grey shadows and then I'll look at the lighter grey areas as well. Um, and then start to look at the darker and lighter areas of yellows that are kind of interesting and there's some black I thought that is black lichen as well actually some other sort of lichen that's making black tones there um, so I'll probably put this um, start to speed this up as a clip so that you can see the painting if you have questions I'm very happy to answer them but uh, I'll just do a little bit more before I go to that process. Yeah. So you can add a little bit of white in as you see a sort of slightly lighter colours along the way. And be observant as you go about how the paint is changing colour as it dries because most paints do, some more than others. They'll slightly alter their look as they dry. You kind of build that into your expertise really um, so you can kind of begin to gauge or if I do this sort of tone then it's going to dry this kind of colour we're starting off with quite a large brush again of course as well to cover a fairly reasonable sized area to begin with and then you'll find it easier just to use a slightly smaller brush, but I wouldn't necessarily use more than two brushes for a painting. It's quite, I'm just working on an A4 size, it's not very big. Um, I guess it's uh, some of that darker area down in there to give it a sense of depth as well. So my process is going to be get the main greys, then look at the darker tones, then the lighter tones, and then go for some of those yellows. So I'm going to begin to speed up the video now and then talk again when I've done a bit of the work.
so um, you can see there, I hope, um, some of the technique that I've used there. I haven't uh, spoken all the way through that, of course, um, on time lapse, but it's um, putting down the, the, the medium greys, then putting down a dark greys, then putting down some lighter greys, and then adding on top of that some of the yellows and remembering to shade those yellows, having dark yellows and light yellows um, on top there. Um, to indicate the lichen. Um, it is a kind of a kind of approximate painting. It's not a very, very detailed piece of work, um, but it would be lovely to, to come and do a very detailed work in the summer when there's a, a lot more time and uh, not necessarily shooting videos to show you, just to give you an idea, give you a flavor, and to show you that actually you can find interest in something that is quite, quite mundane and quite small in a way, it's just a big rock. Um, but the patterns in that are really lovely. So um, please like, share and subscribe if you enjoy these videos. Please share, do share them around with people who can't get out to art classes or never had the benefit of art lessons. Uh, maybe they'd like to try something new or, you know, just got a bit rusty. Maybe they used to do art, but they don't do it anymore. I've had some lovely responses from people. So um, I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments. Do, um, do let me know what you think. We have ideas for things you'd like me to try or different media. I'd be really happy to hear from you. So happy creating. Thanks very much for watching.